What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Smart Raja Concepts. Now, today we're going to talk about impulse entries. Now, before we get into the impulse entries and like, you know, the candle confirmations and all that stuff, let me talk to you about how basically this whole idea of impulse entries came in, right? So now, in the beginning, you know, um, we're basically told that you have to wait for candles to close, you have to wait for candle confirmations, whether it's outside of a zone or when it's creating a support, you have to wait for a candle to close. Once the candle closes, that's your confirmation then take a buy or take a sell and price is most likely to go up or most likely to go down. We all know there are probabilities, right? There's a probability price is going to move up. There's a probability price is going to move down. Now, when we're looking at these things, right? When we're waiting for candles to close, whether bullish or bearish, sometimes price doesn't really give us that confirmation. Sometimes, you know, price just continues rallying up or it continues dropping down. That, that happens a lot of times, like, you know, and as a new trader, when we look at that, we think, oh, okay, maybe I'm missing the move right here. Maybe, like, you know, maybe my strategy is wrong or maybe I haven't aligned myself properly with the market because I was told to wait for the candle to close. And as I'm waiting for the candle to close, price is just moving where I wanted it to go. Man, I've missed the trade. Now, that used to happen to me a lot, you know, and what I decided to do at that point was I was like, okay, that's interesting because I'm really good at executing when candles are closing. I'm really good at executing, especially with confidence as candle is closing, but what am I going to do when candle just continues moving my way? Because someone's taking that trade. Someone is in that trade profiting as price is moving, right? Whether that may be a um, entry before price moved or maybe that w was an entry that someone was, you know, like, okay, you know what? I think price is going to go up and I'm just going to take a buy and price goes up and price goes in their favor and they're like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I knew price was going to go up, but as traders, we need to execute with confirmations, right? So then I started to do was I was like, okay, you know what? If price goes in my favor without candle kind of closing, how could I have executed on this trade? Now, sometimes, you know, we can use a buy stop or a sell stop. Well, buy stops and sell stops basically mean is that once your buy stop is executed, you're anticipating price to continue moving bullish. If your sell stop is executed, you're anticipating price to continue moving bearish. Now, when impulse entries came in, so you have to look at where price is breaking the highs or the lows, you know, because I decided that, okay, you know what? If I'm missing out a trade and price continues moving, where could I have an entry? And I spent almost five to six months just watching, not trading, just watching. I spent five to six months just watching to see how could I have executed on that trade. And then there were like almost certain, you know, very few scenarios that made sense that, okay, maybe this is what we can do. You know, so we're going to talk about, first we're going to talk about um, candles. We're going to talk about candles, the way the candles are closing and forming, uh, types of candles. And then we're going to move into these certain scenarios that have personally worked best for me. You know, and a lot of you guys, you've been through the market fluidity. We have three webinars on impulse entry in market fluidity. Impulse entry is 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. You guys know that, right? But today, we're going to talk about specific scenarios that have a higher probability for price to continue where we expect it to go. So we're going to talk about that. Now, first, we need to talk about types of candles and how the candles close. Some of you may already know this, but we're gonna talk about the candles once again, the whole thing, how candles close, how candles open, what they mean with wicks and without wicks. So let's take a look at this right here together. So here we have a bullish candle with no wick on the top, but it has a wick at the bottom. Next, we have a bullish candle with no wick at the bottom, but it has a wick on the top. Now, what does this mean? Usually when you have a bullish candle with no wick on the top, this means that there's no range for the next candle to go up. That's what that means. But when you have a candle with no wick at the bottom, this means that the candle closed bullish, but it had no volume to go down. It had no opportunity to even create a bearish wick. The volume was so much bullish that it couldn't even go down. It just moved up and it created a wick on the top right? That's what this means. This right here, the candle volume was bullish, obviously. It went up, but it has no wick on the top, which means there's no range for price to continue moving up. That's what this means. Now, 
if we look at this from a bearish perspective, let's say now we have a bearish candle, now the things have turned, right? Now when we take a look at the first bearish candle, the first bearish candle means that there was no bullish volume. There was zero bullish volume. The price couldn't even make a top wick and price came down and made a lower wick at this point. Next one, we have a bearish candle but no wick at the bottom. This also means that there was a lot of volume for price to go down but it didn't make a range. If it didn't make a range to the downside of a bearish candle, this means there's a 50-50 probability that price is going to continue pushing down. Right? Get it? We talked about the bearish candles and we talked about the bullish candles. Candles having no wick on the top and candle having a wick on the top and the bottom at the same time. So, now we're going to talk about the scenario that I execute on and a lot of other successful traders have executed on to make profound gains from the market, right? So now, let's talk about that. For example, we have a bullish candle that goes up. Let's say we have an uptrend. We have another bullish candle that goes up. We have an uptrend. And then we have a bearish candle that closes like this with a big wick at the bottom, right? This normally means that price tried to go down but it couldn't maintain its volume down and closed a small bearish candle. This is what this means. Whenever we have a structure like this, there's a very high probability provided there's volume in the market that could be in your uh, pre-London, London Open, pre-New York, you know, New York Open, London Close. Whenever there's volume in the market, there's a very high probability that price will break the high to continue pushing up. Right now, there are two scenarios in this situation, right? The first scenario, we're going to talk about the first one. The first scenario is that when the new candle starts, right, and it starts to break the high of this bearish candle, once it starts to break the high right here, there's a very high probability it's going to continue pushing up, right? Now, in this case, your stop losses are going to be below the previous candle wick. And, and I'm going to tell you why. The reason why your stop loss is going to be below this previous candle is because this candle didn't make a lower wick to continue moving up. It didn't make a lower wick to continue to move up. So whenever you're taking an impulse entry with a candle that hasn't made a lower wick, there's a higher probability it can continue pushing back down, right? It has a higher probability it can retrace and come down. So this is risky at this point. So when we talk about, okay, what's the probability of this candle continuing up versus you have a candle that made a lower wick first before going up, the candle that made a lower wick first has a higher probability it's going to continue moving to the top side. But if you have a candle that did not make a lower wick and start to go up, that has a lower probability to go up. It can still go up, but the probability of going up is a little bit lower. So when I take a look at a pattern like this, or when I take a look at, you know, if the candles are closing in this way, when you have a bearish candle, I look at the wick to the bottom as having, let's say, a 90% chance that price is going to continue to push up. But if I see that a candle has no wick at the bottom, and it starts to break this high right here, I see that as maybe like a 70% chance that price is going to continue to push up. You see what I'm saying? You know, so whenever you have a candle with a lower wick first, as it starts to break the high, I'm using my regular lot size. But if there's no lower wick, I'm using a smaller risk, a smaller lot size because of the probability that it's going to go up, right? So you're keeping in mind the probability, you're keeping in mind the risk that, okay, what's the probability it's going to go up? And if there's a high probability, you're using your regular risk. If there's a lower probability, you're using a lower risk at that point. Now, let's talk about how are you anticipating the candles to form. Now, the basics of trends is that uh, price, like, you know, let's say uh, you have a candle, you know, and trend is going bullish. You have a next candle, trend is going bullish. So a normal trend is that a candle is going to respect the low and it's going to break the high. 
So it's going to make a higher high and it's going to make a higher low, right? Very simple. That's the basics of a trend. So let's say if we are expecting price in this example to continue to push up. And let's say we have the perfect scenario. And trust me, man, these perfect scenarios, they, they, they always happen. They do happen and people execute on these. Now, the perfect scenario is whenever you have a candle forming, even though this candle starts to go up, it shouldn't break the high of the previous candle. If it doesn't break the high of the previous candle and it starts to make a lower wick, respecting this low, and once it starts to break the high of this bearish candle, then you can say, okay, you know what? This is a very high probability that price can continue to push up. Because one, number one, trend is bullish, right? Number two, number two reason is because the previous candle is an exhaustion candle. An exhaustion candle is when the wick is bigger than the body. It's an exhaustion candle. And number three is that when the candle, new one, is breaking the high. Once it's breaking the high, you're like, okay, you know what? This is perfect. All what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cell, impulse entry, and my stops are going to be below this current candle. And then price is going to continue pushing up. There's a 90% probability that this will continue to move up. I've executed on this a lot of times. A lot of times, every time this happens, I'm like, okay, you know what? This is a higher probability for price to move and let's execute on this. Now, second, right? Second is basically the opposite. Let's say you have a bearish candle coming down. You have another bearish candle that comes down. So we're making lower lows and lower highs and then all of a sudden you have a candle that closes bullish like this. Now essentially we've created a support in the scenario where a candle has closed bullish and you're like okay you know what we've created a support and maybe oh one thing I forgot to mention these scenarios they perfectly work on the 30 minute to 15 minute time frames right also they work on the one hour time frame. They also work on the four hour time frame. But as you go higher up in time frames, what you're going to realize is that the stop losses are going to get bigger, but the moves are also going to be bigger, right? It's more uh, prominent on the 30 minute. I've executed a lot of times on the 30 minute, very, very prominent. I've executed on the uh, one hour time frames as well, very, very prominent. Now, let's say you have an um, situation like this, right? You have a potential support formed, and let's say this is a 30 minute time frame, excuse the writing, 30 minute time frame, and you have a candle closing like this. Now, normally, when I look at this, I'm thinking about that, okay, you know what? As long as the new candle respects this high at this point, and once it breaks this low, okay. Now, back to business, right? So now let's say if the new candle, it respects this high, but once it starts to break this low, this is going to be the perfect confirmation for price to continue pushing down, right? And in this scenario, it's going to be the same exact thing. Now, what you want, you want the new candle to move up, but to respect this high, and as it starts to break the low of the previous candle, which is a bullish candle, this means the trend is being respected because we're making a lower high and we have an opportunity for price to create a lower low, right? So when it starts to break the low, this goes in a sell mode and then price continues to push down. This is the perfect opportunity for an impulse entry in this scenario as well. Now, important thing. When are we expecting this to happen? Normally, normally, whenever you have a scenario like this of an impulse entry, normally with a higher probability, you're looking at the second half of the candle to break this low. Second half of the candle. Sometimes the first half of the candle also works. So let's say if you're looking at, if let's say this is a 30 minute time frame, maybe in the second 15 minute candle starts to break this low. Right, so now I want you guys to follow me here, right? I want you guys to really follow me here and really understand. Because let's say the next candle, it starts to make a top wick 
This means that maybe the first 15 minute candle of this 30 minute time frame starts to make the top wick or maybe it closes bullish or maybe like you know starts to go up but as long as this high respected and the second 15 minute candle